as we go into topic three of chapter four, solving systems of linear equations by our next method, which is called the addition method. Now, this is sometimes often referred to also as the elimination method. And we're going to start off with a really easy example. But there is a strategy to do these. And as we see the example written out here, notice they are both in standard form. And that's what we do. Then the next thing we're going to do is put a line underneath them. We're going to use this addition method. And we just add them up. So this becomes 2x. Here, this just becomes 0. And this becomes a 12. So we get 2x equals 12. We'll divide both sides by 2. And we get x equals 6. Now, if x is 6, we then go to one of our original equations, put a 6 there, and we're going to subtract 6 from both sides, and we get then y equals 1. So 6 over on this side becomes a negative 6. There's where we get y equals 1. So our ordered pair is 6 comma 1. And the method we used was the elimination or addition method. We, through addition, eliminated one of the variables. Okay. So let's see it in action here. There we go. So again, the technique is they're in standard form. And we just add them up. And we got one variable. Replace that in the other equation. And we get the other variable. Now, could we have done that by substitution? Absolutely. Could we have also done it by graphing? Yes. So we now have, in a sense, three methods for solving equations, systems of equations. All right, let's take a look, because they're going to get more challenging as we go on. Uh, this is in standard form. Now, there's a little bit of artistry here. That is, you know, they could do it different ways. And again, we're looking for a way to do it. And keep in mind, I do a lot of these on the additional exercises. Here we don't have a lot of room to write unless we follow what they're using, but I like to do some of these. So, strategy. Now, notice if you just put a line underneath this and add them up, nothing cancels out. But we are allowed by principles of algebra to change an equation to an equivalent equation. And I'm going to change this first equation to an equivalent equation. It's not the same, but it's equivalent, where I can get something to cancel out. And I want to get, let's say, the y's to cancel out. So what do I need to change this y to to have it cancel out? Well, if this were a positive 4y, these would cancel out. So that's what I want to do. And I have to pick a number out here to multiply every term by in this equation so that I get an equivalent equation. But this term is going to end up being a positive 4y. And I'm going to multiply this by a negative 4. Because a negative 4 times a negative y makes it a positive 4y. So now I rewrite it. This is going to become a negative 8x. 
this is going to become a positive 4y, and this is going to become a negative 28. Now, this next equation, I just write it as it is. This is 8x. This is a negative 4y. And this is a positive 1. And you might say, wait a minute, something strange is happening here, but that's okay. Just follow us along here. These cancel out also, <laughs> and this gives me a zero, and this is a zero, and this is a negative 27. Now, I end up with a zero equals a negative 27. Is this a true statement? No, this is false. Well, what did we say in the previous section? if we end up with a false statement that these lines are parallel. These are parallel lines. Will there ever be a solution? And the answer is no. So for example three, we have no solution. Okay. Seems like we might have missed an example because we went from, let's go back here just for a moment. Ah, I did miss an example. Well, let's do example two. Now, as we look at this system here, again, we're introducing that same thing we did before. That is, we want to make one of these equations such that something will cancel out. So let's just use their work here. So they're going to multiply this first equation up here by a negative 3. Doing so makes this an equivalent equation. Now the y's will cancel out. So we put our line, add this up, we get a 5y. This is a 0. This adds up to negative 10. We divide both sides by 5. We get x equals negative 2. We then put our negative 2 into one of the other equations. And when we solve that for y, we get y equals negative 2. So our ordered pair is negative 2, negative 2. Okay, that one works. Now, let me do number 3, or, or not number 3, but it's practice 2 of this one for you. I'm going to do it up over here too, a little more room. So as we look at this, we notice that uh, nothing's going to cancel out. But if I multiply this equation now by a negative 2, each of these by negative 2, watch what happens. I get x minus 2y equals 11. I'm not changing this equation at all. But this equation now becomes a negative 6x. This now becomes a negative 2 times a negative y gives me a positive 2y. That's what I wanted to do. And this gives me a negative 26. Now when I add them up, this becomes a negative 5x equals a negative 15. Now I divide both sides by a negative 5. I get x equals 3. So then I can go to either one, and I can 
use this one. This is going to be a negative 3 here. So, neg uh, I'm sorry, positive 3. 3 minus 2y equals 11. So, I solve this. I get a 3. x is 3. I then go to this first equation. There's my x, which is 3, minus 2y equals 11. So I now transpose that, and I get a negative 2y equals 8. Because this 3 on this side becomes a negative 3. I divide both sides by a negative 2. I get y equals a negative 4. So my ordered pair then for this practice example is 3 comma negative 4. Okay, I wanted to be sure we did one where we did it from scratch in a sense. And we did this one already. And we see we got a false statement. So these are parallel lines. There's not going to be any solution. And in example four, again, we have to modify let's say this first one, we want the x's to cancel out. I'm going to multiply this just by a three which is what they do here. And as we distribute, we get this. And then when we add them up, this is 0, this is 0, and this is 0. So we end up with 0 equals 0. Is that a true statement? And the answer is yes. Well, what did we say when we end up with a true statement? Well, these equations are actually the same equation. And let me prove it. Instead of multiplying this by a, a 3, I'm going to multiply it by a negative 3. So what does this become? Well, that becomes a negative 9x. And what does this become? A positive 2y. And what does this become? A negative 6. And you see, these equations are actually the same equation. Now, by doing the opposite sign, as we did here, we got everything to subtract out, and that's why we ended up with 0 equals 0. So again, we write the answer using either equation in set builder notation. Okay. Now, they do get a little more challenging than this sometimes. And let's take a look at this one. All right, look at it for a moment. And by the way, I don't know if you realize this, but, uh, you know, on some of your examples, even online, there will be little short videos showing you this technique. So, what's going on here? Now, as we look at this, we have it in standard form. Nothing's going to cancel out. And I can't multiply a 3 by something to have the 5 cancel out, nor this one. So, here's a case where I have to multiply each equation by something to make both of them equivalent equations so something will cancel out. Again, there's a little artistry. Here we have, for our y terms, one's positive and one's negative. So chances are just by multiplying this by something and this by something, I can get something here to have them cancel out. Yes, if I make 4 times 9 a 36, and 9 times 4, 36, which is what they've done, the y's will cancel out. But remember, I have to multiply everything else by that as well. So when I add this up, it's 47x 
add this up, and they're going to make it something that is reasonable. So dividing both sides here by 47, I get x equals 3. So there's one of my ordered pair members. I just have to find the y. So I take the 3, and either of my original equations and solve it for y. And that will give us y equals 1. Now, can you see you're using all of your skills that you've developed from chapter 1, signs of numbers, chapter 2, equations. And then we're dealing with linear equations. We're wondering where will these lines intersect? And we're using algebra to solve it. And here is a summation of how to do it. Put them in standard form. If anything cancels out on first uh, view, do that. If not, modify one of the equations so that something will cancel out. If modifying one doesn't do it, modify both as we've just illustrated. And you can always check your answers. Okay, mm, look at this one. For example, six fractions. Again, what you're going to have to do here is get rid of the fractions. This is also chapter two. By multiplying each term here by a two, gets rid of all the fractions. Multiplying each term here by six, that gets rid of the fractions. And then you see what you have. And we get this. Now, notice, still nothing cancels out. So the next thing is, well, if you multiply this equation by a 2, everything by a 2, the 2s will cancel out. And that's what they've done here. And here you get a really wild fraction. Well, you're, you started with a fraction. By the way, you can just take this fraction, replace it, and then solve for the other, and look at what you get. Wow. I feel sorry for you a little bit, but uh, this is what college algebra, even actually high school algebra, is all about, uh, being able to do this and follow the work carefully and it checks. And if you get the right answer, you ought to feel very proud of yourself. Again, most of the ones that you'll be getting are of the, a little easier nature. But this just shows you what you are expected to do using all of the skills we've talked about. Okay, well, again, practice will help build mastery and uh, giving you the right to do well on your test.